Okay, welcome everyone to my continuation of what is representation theory. We continue with the representations of the symmetric group. So it's part three. Um, so I would like to talk about character formulas. So remember that characters are kind of the most important numerical datum you want to write down about representations. Um, so we should try to do that for, well, symmetric groups because, well, symmetric groups, right? So symmetric groups are important. So we should try at least. And yeah, this is possible. It's an old result due to Fabinius. Uh, so it was already known to Frobenius 120 years ago or so. And it's known as Frobenius's character formula. It's a closed formula, if you want, that computes all the characters of all symmetric groups, which is very impressive, actually. Um, it's not super easy. It's not super complicated either. I try to explain it. Um, usually, one needs to do one or two examples to get the hang of it, and then kind of forgets all the details and kind of only knows how it works roughly, and then you look it up look up the details. But in the end, I have a gem, which is um, kind of the, the character on the trivial uh, conjugacy clause of the dimension, which is a really beautiful and easy to remember formula. So the dimensions of those are actually easy to compute. And this follows from um, this Frobenius's character formula. So the idea is as follows, and it was kind of already known to Frobenius. So we, we would like to do this one here, the character table of S3 in this case. Um, and here's the characters, whatever, some numbers. And we know already that the irreducibles are indexed by those Young diagrams. So the trivial representation, this is chi one on this side, this is chi three, strange ordering, and this is chi two on this side. Uh, so we know the corresponds to those diagrams. And so it kind of makes sense to ask the question, well, can we somehow formulate what the characters are, some formula that eats a Young diagram and spits out the numbers you in the orange box, right? So this is kind of Frobenius' question. Uh, is there some XY Young diagram nonsense that just gives us those characters? And that's exactly Frobenius' character formula, right? So it takes its input, takes Young diagrams. And not just one diagram, it actually takes two Young diagrams because we also know that the conjugacy classes are indexed by Young diagrams. So the simple representation and the conjugacy classes are indexed by Young diagrams. So in order to get this three by three table here for S3 or in general, the whatever times whatever table, I would like to write down a table like this and Frobenius's character formula. So uh, conjugacy classes, simple representations and Frobenius's character formula should take two of them and spit out a number. And that's exactly what it does. So let's have a look now at how it works. It's a bit tricky. It's not so bad. I give you some examples. Uh, just try to do it yourself. And then you kind of, kind of forget about it. Just keep in mind that there is a formula. And if you really need it, you look it up. Um, so this is how it works. So given two Young diagrams, so these are partitions that I write lambda one for uh, the number of boxes in the first row up to lambda k, the number of boxes in the k row, assuming that I have k, row, k rows. I have two Young diagrams, lambda and mu, really those two Young diagrams. This one is lambda and this one is mu. So lambda is a simple and mu is the conjugacy clause. And what you do is you, you compute those two numbers here, L1, L, or those K numbers, uh, L1 um, up to LK, those K numbers. And this is just, well, the length of the row where you are in. So length of the row plus the total length um, so if you have two rows, you add two minus a row number. We'll give you a nicer example in a second. And this gives you a polynomial in k variables. So x1 and x2. And you're looking for, well, x1 to the l1, x2 to the l2, and so on. You're looking for that polynomial in a different polynomial. And the other polynomial is what you obtain from the second ingredient. And you write it down as follows. So you just, for the second one, you count the number of columns of a given length. So here, this one has only columns of length one, and I have three of them, so I want a three, and you take this polynomial here that you can generate, uh, this funny polynomial. Give you an example in a second, and the, the, the theorem is, the statement is that you factor this polynomial, you look for this guy here, and whatever kind of coefficient you see, that's your character. Um, so that's exactly Frobenius's character formula. Here's the example, and if you understand this example, then you can, can do it somewhat, uh, well, in general. So you start with your lambda, you add the length, so the length is three, you make it longer, right? You add this little three by three block here, okay? So you look at this diagram and you subtract the row number. So minus one for the first, minus two, minus three, and you get this diagram. And the polynomial you look like, uh, you, want to, you want to find is now x1 first to the length of the four. So four 
2, 1. So x1 to the 4, x2 to the 2, x3. So that's the polynomial you want to look for. So just make the diagram thicker by adding this little a block here and then subtract the row number and that's a polynomial you're looking for. And for the second one, which in this example is just the same, so you can have the same course, which is uh, on my example list from before, is just a diagonal, right? So this is when, when they agree. I don't need to do that, but um, in this example, it's just what it is. You count the different rows, so there's a column, sorry, you count the different columns. There's a column of lengths one, so I1 is one. There is no column of lengths two, so no I2. There's a column of length three, I3 is one. And you write down this polynomial. So the first power sum to the I1, the second one to the I2, there is no second one, the third one to the I3, and so on. And you multiply with the anti-symmetrizer, which is always just variable minus variable, all of them in a certain order, such as the smaller one is always in front. That gives you a huge polynomial. I didn't even factor it completely. And you look for the coefficient of whatever kind of polynomial uh, you're looking for here, this one, for example. In this case, it's zero, and that means the character is zero. That's not so bad. It's a bit well, complicated. It's not really complicated. It's a little bit confusing because you need to keep all this data in mind how you shift your diagram. So basically what you do is you shift your diagrams, you get polynomials uh, from those shifted diagrams, and then you look for coefficients of those polynomials. That's, that's all you do. And the nice application is the hook length formula. And this one is really easy to remember. And it's just then a reformulation of Kubinis' character formula, right? So character formula gives us a whole character table. And now I'm just asking for Maybe we have a nicer formula for just the first column, right? The number, the dimensions. And indeed, there's a really cute one, which is easy to remember. So the only thing you do is you take n factorial and well, n factorial for Sn, and you divide it by a certain number. And the number is the so-called product of hook lengths. So for your diagram, so this is my diagram here, you just count, so this is seven, I claim, you just count the lengths of this hook. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Uh, the length of the next hook here is six, the length of the next hook here is five, and so on. So here, seven, six, five. This hook is a little bit boring, it's just two. This hook is even more boring, it's one. And you do that for all boxes, you take the product of all of them, that's what you divide by, and you get the dimension of the representation, which is a really easy formula for the dimension, and it only uses the Young diagram combinatorial. Okay, to wrap up. Uh, well, Young diagrams are just the notion, the crucial notion to study representations of symmetric groups. Uh, so one might hope for a character formula just in terms of Young diagrams. That's what Frobenius' character formula is. It's, it's not super tricky, as I said, but it's a, a bit, well, tricky to, to remember. But um, a special case is this hook length formula, which is really just counting the, the lengths of the hooks in the diagram. Count all of them, take the product, and whatever you get, that's what you need to divide by and factorial, and that's your dimension. And that's actually a pretty nice statement. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed the video, and I also hope to see you next time.